Dogs. The most trustworthy, loving, loyal friend of humans right next to the touchscreen. And when brought together, you get... I think we're all familiar with Nintendo's classic virtual pet series at this point. Lots of people had Nintendogs growing up, and those same dogs are probably famished right now. We're talking 24 million sales across several versions, the DS's second best-selling game right behind New Super Mario Bros. That's dogs in second place, dog shit in first. But the craze wasn't over there. More versions, cards, merchandise, Smash Brothers, a Kid Icarus reference. The Nintendogs franchise was growing into an unstoppable force, so what in the Lord's name happened here. For all the hoots there was over Nintendogs, I never see anybody talk about its 3DS sequel, Nintendogs Plus Cats. I remember the game coming out and the promotions they had at the time, it was easily the most fitting in the console's launch lineup, but afterwards, the buzz and legacy for this game was non-existent. Unlike the first one, it was seemingly just forgotten about. Taking a look at the sales, yeah, it makes sense, but does it? What's with the drop-off? How come it didn't sell nearly as much as its predecessor? Well, to answer that, we must first examine the game itself. I bought this bad boy last month in my scramble to collect everything before the 3DS eShop closes. I've got a big old bucket list. I had Nintendogs growing up, but that game came out when I was 8. Nintendogs Plus Cats launched when I was 14, thus... I wasn't into virtual puppies and kittens anymore, I was summoning demons, baby! But I loved Nintendogs, I spent many hours with it, and I couldn't wait to see how the sequel refreshed the formula. Okay, so the game starts with the same intro, but we have a few more breeds to choose from this time. The models also look much nicer, as they should. It's the 3DS, mom. I decided I'd go with a Bull Terrier, because ever since the Walter meme, I've kind of been obsessed with them. The one I chose looks like Walter, but his description said he was liked by everyone, so I named him Jonathan. Shout out to, like, the six people who get that joke. And then it's Nintendogs. It's Nintendogs. Nintendogs. You can pet them, you can teach them tricks, you can buy toys and play with them, and unlike a real dog, you can just completely forget about them, which is what everyone did. Nintendogs plus cats does not do tons different. It's really just a prettier Nintendogs with a tiny bit more things, but as far as the overall gameplay goes, it's dogs. Yeah, you can have a cat, but they're the equivalent of a gotcha JPEG, and I don't know if I'm alone in this, but the models look funny. Recently, we've had some stray black cats coming around, and they're very sweet, lovable animals, and I wanted to replicate that in this game, but the models... And they don't do anything. You can't walk with them, you can't put them in competitions, they just sit around the house, eat food, and exist. So yeah, they got that exactly right. To top it off, Nintendogs Plus Cats changed a few things from the first game, and I'm a little torn. The walking segment from the original let you plan out your whole walk in side-scrolling fashion, but this game puts the environment in front of you and lets you walk side to side. As a game on a console that focuses 3D, I can totally understand this. And it's got Miis, which is cool because 2011 was still the Mii era, and I have the softest spot in my heart for these little beefcakes. But the negatives are that it's almost always the same walking distance, where you walk like 200 feet and then you are just home. It's much more obviously on rails, but ones that have been decided for you, ugh! They got rid of the agility trials, they reduced the amount of animals you could own from 8 to 6, and they made them more expensive and stupid, let me tell you. In the competitions, my Nintendogs dog was a damn missile. You threw that frisbee to China and he'd have it back to you in seconds, like... And then we have the dogs in Nintendogs Plus Cats. You stupid! I don't want to completely discredit this game though, it does make sure to do what every good launch title should do, and that's show off the console's features. Most of this I will not have on screen because we're playing on an emulator, but we have AR cards, AR card competition, spot and street pass functionality, as well as the 3DS pedometer, but let's be real, I don't let this princess leave the house. You can recycle scraps found on your walk to craft new items. Wow, the recipe to make any sequel good. There's lure competitions, there's a robot dog, and they brought back my favorite thing from the original, the Mario Racer toy. Easily one of the best items, so much to the point that they made it a real thing. That sounds like a joke, I'm not kidding. They took the concept of what if I couldn't play Mario Kart because the dogs were constantly screwing up the course and brought it to life. And that is unfortunately about as close to a sequel as we'd ever get.
You can't look at a game like Nintendogs plus Cats and say it was a failure. I mean, it was the first 3DS game to sell a million and would go on to almost hit 5 million. But the game had enough flaws to warrant average scores and more obviously to be the last in its short-lived franchise. Should we blame the game itself? I know that's kind of what I've been motioning towards with the whole video, but I don't think that's why it performed far worse than the original. Realistically, this is not a question of why Nintendogs plus Cats sold so much less, but actually a question of why the original Nintendogs sold so much more. And the answer is because of the immensely different climates they were released in. Nintendogs was born in the age of the pet simulation genre, you know, stuff like Neopets and Tamagotchi, and it was born on a console that was very popular to own not to play games, but to use applications with, like training your brain, learning languages, cooking stuff, quitting smoking. Put simply, this casual-oriented software operated less like video games and more like pre-smartphone mobile games where you can check in a little bit each day and then move on. With a combination of this casual audience and the digital pet crowd and the amazing speak-for-itself use of the touchscreen, Nintendogs had its success written out long in advance. But by the time we get to 2011, none of these market bonuses are still in effect. Because now, smartphones actually exist, and one by one, all of this software is about to become lots less expensive, if not just free. Compare this with the $250 console that Nintendogs Plus Cats is about to launch on, mark another $40 for the game, and I think we have our answer. But of course, with this launch lineup, the Nintendogs name still managed to push it to a million pretty fast. It's also worth pointing out the differences in the install bases, the DS sold 154 million, the 3DS sold like half that, but still, the ownership ratio is pretty uneven. Nintendogs was novel in 2005, and so was the DS with its touchscreen, but six years later, Nintendogs Plus Cats Plus 3DS wasn't so much. I can understand gamers want to opt out, especially once the reviews started coming in to say it was a game most already played. Why go for the thing you've already experienced for the same amount of money when you could get a Samsung Galaxy and play Neko Etsume? How's the pronunciation? Neko Etsume? I'm pretty- or Neko Et- Neko Etsume. Now just so it's out there, I'm not saying that smartphones are directly the cause for the death of Nintendogs. What I'm saying is that they're very much grounds for saving it. You may have noticed that the Switch has no Nintendogs get- get that out of here. But how can you expect it to? No microphone, no camera, and on a home console? Y'all remember the last time we had animals on a home console? Where I think it would fit perfectly is as one of Nintendo's mobile apps, because I really don't think you can squeeze more than 30 minutes out of any Nintendogs game in a day, and that's being super generous. It shouldn't cost $40, even Nintendo must have realized that because they made it $20, but I still think it could operate best as freeware on a phone. Something where you log in, spend some time with your pets, do your dailies, interact with friends, whatever, items cost money, okay, blah blah, yeah, microtransactions, they're unavoidable. And perhaps some sort of real-world exercise motivation to walk your dog in the antics style? I don't know, probably not. But the nostalgia is ripe, and until then, Nintendogs plus Cats is a solid holdover that I think is worth checking out. This is a game that truly represents the transitional values between the DS and 3DS, and it should be on everyone's collection list before the eShop closes. It's not as revolting as most sequels are ideally, but if the formula ain't broke, slap some cats on it. The last thing I will say on this game, guys, <sighs> boss of frickin' bias. We're hitting levels I never even dreamed possible. The original Nintendogs was filled with bells, chimes, instruments that really put you in the image of a cute puppy playtime sesh. But this sounds just like something fresh off the Wii, and that should come as no surprise considering that the sound director is literally credited for Wii Main Unit, as well as various channels. It's no longer about the adorable energetic vibes of a puppy, but rather the relaxing, natural, acoustic, environmental relationship between cat and dog. 